Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. That's sweet music, baby. That's right. You know what that means. This is Winning Cures Everything. I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. We have got uh, we've got a lot to get into today. We're going to jump into the SEC West. East. East. Are we doing the East? I want to do the East first. All right. We're jumping into the SEC East. Y'all don't know East. that this is first. Yeah. <laughs> But All right, we're doing the SEC East first. That's right, we did talk about that, didn't we? Uh, but first, let's let that sweet music play. That's right, it's college football season. It is time to party. The show brought to you by winningcureseverything.com. You can find everything about us over there, including our YouTube, our podcasts, our picks, our previews, our gambling picks. Everything else will be right there for you this season. So go over and check it out, winningcureseverything.com. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at GaryWCE. You can follow me at Chris B. Giannini. You can find the show on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, etc. over at winningcureseverything.com. If you're on YouTube, hit that subscribe button for us. Leave some comments. Tell us what we got right, what we got wrong. We appreciate all of it. If you're going to trash talk, you better be able to take it. Just letting you know because we will come back and we will come back hard. Just telling you. All right. So uh, the show also brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi. The South's premier sports gambling destination. They've got six absolutely incredible sports books. You can find out more information on those over at tunicatravel.com. We will be down there quite a bit this football season. I would guarantee it. NFL Sundays, college football Saturdays. Uh, anytime there's a good special event, we'll probably be down there. We'll let you know ahead of time. Um, but sometimes you may just walk into a sports book and find us sitting around. Just letting you know. So go down to Tunica. Do yourself a favor. Check it out. We're jumping in SEC East. Are you ready to rock? Yes, sir. Let's go on and do the Florida Gators. I'm all in on this. All right. I know that you're not, but we'll we'll talk about it. Okay. Um, da -da -da. I, don't Let know me go I don't know that I'm not. Ten and three last year, five and three in conference. Returning starters, they got five coming back on offense, seven on defense. Experience? Number 52 in the country coming back. Number five in the conference. Dan Mullen, 79 and 49 in 10 years as a coach. That's at Mississippi State and last year. Was only the third coach. 1940 Stanford's Clark Shaughnessy. And 2013 Auburn's Gus Malzahn did this as well. The one of only three coaches to win 10 games with a Power 5 school the year after they won four games or less. That's pretty impressive. That's high, high company. Now... The circumstances were a little different because there were so many people suspended last year. There was so much drama, all this kind of mess. Coach fired in the middle of the year. Just a mess. Quarterback Felipe Franks, leading rusher LaMichael Pirine, and all three top wide receivers returned, but they're replacing four out of five guys on the offensive line. Quarterback Emory Jones, probably going to be used as a weapon more often this season. Uh, his videos, like his training videos, yeah. have been pretty remarkable, but obviously... Dude, dude's an athlete. Yeah, he's an absolute he's a freak. beast. Yeah. yeah. Uh, defense, they kept defensive coordinator Todd Grantham. Uh, the Cincinnati Bengals came calling for him, and Florida gave him a $300,000 raise, and it was probably money well spent because, I'm telling you, his aggressive 3-4 scheme was awesome last year, and it's been pretty awesome basically everywhere that he's gone. Oh, yeah, ever since he, he yeah. left Louisville for Mississippi State to come with Dan, and, and yeah, he's been really, really good. He's been uh, pretty unbelievable. He was, at, uh, he was at Georgia for a year, and then he went to Louisville, and then he went to Mississippi State, and right. Florida. I mean, it's just, you know, he's been all over. But everywhere he goes, they get better. People may not like his style. Like, he, he's fiery. He'll get after you. He'll get all up in there. But he's he's an excellent coach. That's he right. fits very well with no, Dan Nobody's going to argue that. They're replacing uh, defensive end Polite. They need to develop depth at defensive tackle and linebacker. Uh, they got the culture and the locker room back in year one, but... A lot of off-season drama, and you know they're ahead of schedule, but they are not up to the level of Alabama and Georgia and LSU as of yet. Now, yes, I get it; they beat LSU, but long term, oh, yeah, just, yeah, 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 just just being able to chalk up wins, know where you're at, the stability of the program. Yes, it has nothing to do with wins and losses. You are correct. I have got Florida. At nine and three this season, there is a reason why their over under is at nine. The over is plus one sixty. The under is minus one eighty. Vegas thinks 
that they are going to hit nine. Like it, it, that's either nine or under. Nine either or nine, nine and three or eight and Getting four. Getting to right? ten and two, we think, is pretty drastic. Yes. Uh, I've got them losing to Auburn. I've got them losing at LSU. I've got them losing at Missouri. And then that's it. I've got them nine and three. I think they beat Tennessee at home. I think they get revenge on Kentucky on the road. Uh, I think they went at South Carolina. I've actually got them beating Georgia this year. But a lot of that has to do with uh, the state of the two programs and where I think Georgia might take them lightly, uh, especially if they lose to Auburn and at LSU early. They may not take them as seriously as they normally would. Now, I could be completely I wrong on yeah, that. Know you know, that. They could beat Auburn and lose to Georgia. That's it. Um, either way, I, I think 9-3 and three is pretty good. I think, I, it's, I think it's really good for this team. I think they're going to be 9-3 and three as well. It wouldn't surprise me if they're 8-4 and four just because I think they've got a tough run. You've got them losing at Missouri. I think they could lose that South Carolina game. But don't don't know if they will. Here's my thing. I think if they if they lose to South Carolina, they'll they'll beat a Georgia, an LSU, an Auburn. They'll beat one of those bigger, tougher schools. There, I just think kind of that's how the chips are going to fall. Yeah. I don't know exactly where that loss is going to come in at, or, or where where that big win is. I do think they start the season off with a big win against Miami. I think that's a big deal in. Week zero that they're yeah. calling it. Um, Dan's a good coach, and when he has multiple weeks or, or time to prepare, you know he he doesn't he doesn't often lose. Um, so that's we we see that very similar. If I was gonna bet this, the juice is pretty heavy on the under, but I don't I don't see a world where they go ten and two. No, no, it's it, it, the only bet to make would be the under, and you pay the high juice. Yeah, you pay the high juice, and then go from there. Now, if they hit ten. We'll come back. Oh, no, I could be wrong. I mean, yeah, I've I've been wrong before. I just, I don't see it before the season. Having skill players, but see, I see football different than a lot of people, and I don't don't get caught up in the fact that you bring all these athletes to town. If you don't win in the trenches, you can't win, especially in the SEC. And they are not set up to do that. They're inexperienced, and they're young in the trenches, and they've had chaos and drama and turmoil in the offseason. Yeah. I don't know what that means. That's actually very rare for a Dan Mullins coach team. So I don't. And of course, he's only was he was only there for one year. Maybe the chaos is as he's there, he's bringing a little bit of law and order, a little bit of ruling with an iron fist, and players can't handle that. I don't know. Or maybe he just doesn't know how to handle like highly rated recruits. Yeah. The, no, you're because right on he's, that. He's not really used to them. What he's used to is taking two and three star talents. And coaching and, them up. And helping them play on Sundays. Yeah. And everybody knows their name when they're done as seniors, but nobody knows their names as freshmen. Now, it, now at Mississippi State, in the in the later years, like they were able to get Jeffrey Simmons. They were able to get Leo Lewis. and, and But they, you had they, to build the program to that. To that point. And, and you're talking yeah. one or two blue chip players in a locker room full of guys that nobody wanted and, and had to fight for everything they have, as opposed to Florida's locker room, which is, Everybody was supposed to be there. Yeah. Everybody had a big chip next to their name, and and their four star talent all over the field. Now you're right. You're right. So I've got them nine and three. You've got them. I got them on three also. I, I don't. I don't dislike this team. Or, or, or I mean, I, I don't like Florida. They're a rivalry of ours. But I don't. I mean, I don't. You know. It, it, yeah. I don't I, think they're going to be bad. No, and they, I don't know got, that eight and four is is total chaos. They play LSU and Auburn. On that side, I mean that's that's brutal. LSU, Auburn, Georgia, uh, at South Carolina, which at Missouri, it, like at their Missouri, their and road they, schedule and they open is with Miami. Yeah, and they open with Miami. Their road schedule is not easy. No, no, it is not. So uh, nine and three would be really, really good for this year. Yeah, really good. Uh, let's move on. Georgia, the Georgia Bulldogs, eleven and three, seven and one last year. Uh, returning starters, they got six coming back on offense, seven on defense. Experience. Number 36 in the country, experience returning. Number four in the conference. Kirby Smart, 32 and 10 in three years. Uh, that is the same record as Mark Richt, I believe, right? Yeah, I, think I mean, that's right. yeah, he took over. Um, he, he didn't have to rebuild much. No. Uh, they lost both offensive coordinator Jim Chaney and defensive coordinator Mel Tucker. Uh, but this will be the most talented Georgia team that Kirby Smart has had as of yet. They've strung along three straight top three recruiting classes. That's pretty awesome. Uh, 
Over under is 11 this year. Over is plus 140. Under is minus 160. So Vegas thinks it's either 11 or under. One, one way or the other. Uh, this is quarterback Jake Fromm's team now. Right. Justin Fields is gone. There's no Jacob Eason behind him. Uh, nothing like that. It is Jake Fromm's team. With the OC gone, uh, more than likely they're going to throw more. Like Jim Chaney relied so heavily on the run, and they have got a stable of running backs, right? Uh, this this year's core will look the same, like as as a Georgia team normally does. Uh, even with losing their top three wide receivers and their top tight end, they're still probably going to throw more because Jake Fromm is a good quarterback. He's really, really good. I think they lost their best running back, but they. Yeah. Never, I don't know why Kirby never gave him the ball, but. Well, running back DeAndre Swift, he's going to put up some massive numbers oh, this no, year. And Swift um, was the, the got he, way the more playmaker. touches. He was the yeah. playmaker that they they started um, and, and rode more than more than ever. Defense was number thirteen in total defense, number fourteen in scoring last year. Which, looking at this team, you would have thought they would have been higher in both of those. But either way, the defensive line needs to improve. They were number thirty-one in the country against the run last year. Not great, but it, they they did slow down the teams that they needed to. I mean, Kentucky got nothing on the ground against them, but it, maybe that's easy to do when you're not afraid of the pass. Right, but LSU, however, ran. LSU all didn't have to be over. afraid of the pass, and you I know, mean, LSU they, destroyed them. Uh, the secondary looked look vulnerable bad. without DeAndre Baker in the Sugar Bowl. Uh, that's a concern. So you need them to be able to step up this year. Uh, out of their, they're they're one of the three top most talented teams in college football. The Bama hurdle is big, but the expectations at this point for Kirby Smart are national title or bust. Oh, now, I don't yeah. know I don't know how realistic that is. Uh, I mean, this is still a first-time head coach, and yes, he is in year four, but, you know, I, how realistic is it to expect, well, if, if you don't win a national championship, it's a bum season. Like, that's, that's where we're at with this team now. I don't know that I agree with that. Okay. I said yeah earlier, but but that's because that's the expectation. You've made it to the SEC championship every year. You've made it to the national championship already. You're they haven't one, won a national championship. You're, you're since a complete collapse away from making it to back to back national championships or, or playoffs and winning a national title. So I, I think that's the expectation. I think that's the goal. I think they're at that level, but I don't know that it's a failure season if you don't get. Yeah, no, but I, I see college football very differently. I don't think there are a lot of undefeated teams, even though it happens more often than I would rather think. I, I just think somewhere along the lines, these are still 18, 19 year old kids. They, yeah, you know, have bad days. They have bad games. They're more volatile emotionally, or the way they handle um, different things. I could be completely wrong with that. You are, and, and you're, they're the gonna odds, find, and they're gonna find places to fall. The odds of you winning all of them. Or losing one. Uh, losing one game, even one big game, are much more likely than you winning all of them. That's right. Like, that's just the way that this goes. That's right. So, uh, look, I've got Georgia at 11-1, and 7-1 in the conference. I've got them losing to Florida. Would it surprise me if they beat Florida and they run the table? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Uh, but it wouldn't surprise me if they were to lose to Notre Dame. It wouldn't surprise me if they lose, like, at Tennessee or to Missouri, or at Auburn, or, you know, Texas A&M late in the year. Like, it, uh, there's all sorts of spots that could be landmines that you don't expect. Uh, but what we've seen from Kirby Smart in the last two years is when they've got that really difficult road game, that is when it's difficult, right? Like, that's yes. that's when his team he sometimes... Is, he has not traveled well when it's against a big boy school. Well, it's, it's so against Alabama... He kind of panicked in a pressure situation and did a fake punt on 4th and 11. Well, they ran a fake field goal early against LSU, and things kind of uh, rolled downhill from there. That's right. right. And it was the same thing at Auburn back two years ago. Like That's the right. year that they made it to the national championship game, they're playing at Auburn. It's a close game. They're down, but he tries to come up with something. Like it, they, it, But they lose like... They lose focus. It was close early. Yeah, it was close early, and All, then and then it just say, snowballed. Over killed him. Um, but but it was it was still close, even you know in the third, midway through the third quarter. Score was, but they were they were. I mean, LSU yeah. game was the close score wise, but LSU dominated every aspect of the game. Yeah, and and they so they lose focus 
when they start to get punched in the mouth, right? And the question is, which one of these teams can punch them in the mouth? And I don't know off the top of my head yet. Like, A&M is capable. I think they've got four games Auburn that, is capable. Can, that can happen at. Florida is capable. Notre Dame is capable. At Tennessee, We don't know, maybe? but Tennessee's capable. Like, yeah. it wouldn't surprise you if Tennessee came out. This would be Tennessee's first, like, real crazy test, I guess, coming off of Florida. They got a bye week. They could easily... And, and Georgia's got a bye week. Does Tennessee have a bye week? Yep. Right? Yeah. Tennessee's, Tennessee's got the bye week, too. And, and Tennessee just hired their offensive coordinator. Yeah. So, like, he's going to know a few tricks of the trade with this team and what they're good at, what they're not. Uh, I, I've got Georgia 11-1. and one. I've got them in the SEC championship game again. Like, I mean, I've got them in the SEC championship game again. i got them 10-2 and two yeah. because I, I don't think they're a flawless team. I think they have flaws. I think Kirby absolutely has flaws. I think when things get high-pressured, like you said, when he – Feels just a little bit of heat. Now he's a great front running coach. If they get out early on you, absolutely. That that beast gets loose. You're not getting him back in the barn. Okay, but if you get a little bit of pressure on him, I think he folds and he folds fast. That LSU mistake. That LSU mistake. I, he felt pressure in that game in the first quarter. Yeah, and he just collapsed. Now the the Alabama and LSU game could not throw the football. The Alabama we game tried. last year, he didn't feel pressure until late in the game. That's right. And but as soon as he feels it, he falls to pieces. Yeah. I mean, I've never seen a coach, and he did the same thing in the national championship game. I've never seen a coach have be in such control, and then it's like a switch goes off, and as soon as he panics, he loses all sense of what his team is, what got him there. And I don't understand how there's not another coach on the sideline that can't say, whoa, 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 whoa. let's just let's just call a timeout for a minute. Well, and and let's let's figure out maybe that'll how be did we get here? But hang yeah. on, you think that's gonna be fixed, well, but I mean, they, why would it be fixed? They have a new offensive coordinator, they got a new defensive coordinator, right? Um now it's possible that Georgia wanted Cheney to leave, right? Maybe. And that's because if Georgia wanted to outbid Tennessee, oh no, they, like, they would have. That's right. Um and, but maybe and, Cheney didn't want to be there. It's Possible for that. There's all I mean, sorts of different reasons. If I'm the OC the job, and right? I put up the points that I put up against Auburn, I watch how LSU played. Now, I don't know whose decision it was to stop running Elijah Holyfield when he touched the ball eight times and he averaged eight yards per carry, and that's not one yard for 80 yards, It one, one carry for no, eight it yards. Was, it was every time he touched the ball, he got eight yards, and he only touches it eight times. I don't know whose decision that is. I know this. LSU couldn't stop him, and I was terrified when he touched on the field. And they kept putting Swift in, and Swift got nothing. But well, Swift was hurt too. It, like it's, but I think we had a lot to do with that. Yeah, but even still, like that's that's the thing, right? Like you you got to know your personnel. You so gotta I don't what you're I don't do. know who made those decisions, but if if he was hamstrung as an OC and being told to call certain things and put other you know personnel in the field, then yeah, if I'm that OC, you've collapsed twice against the team to put us in the playoffs or to win as a national championship, I don't want to be a part of this program anymore. Yeah. We won't win as many games, but the pressure to win is too high, and you as a coach can't do it. Then then you could see Cheney leaving because of that. Yeah. Now, if that was all Cheney's decision, then I could absolutely see Georgia saying, this guy's got to go. This cat averaged eight yards a touch every time he touched it, and, and we kept pulling it yeah. for a guy who's hurt. So anyway, I got him 10-2. and two. Um, I don't know what two games they're going to lose, but Florida's not going to be easy. At Auburn's not going to be easy. I think A&M's one of the best teams in the country that has just a hellacious schedule. We'll get to that in the next next show. But it's just one of those situations where I would be more shocked if they ran the table than if they finished 9-3. A&M and plays... And I know, I know that's a big, big difference. A&M plays... South Carolina at home the week before they play at Georgia. Um, but you could totally see where Georgia... But Georgia's at Auburn. Yeah, Georgia leaves everything on the table at Auburn to get a win, and then they they cough up the next week. Like now, body, body, body blow Al theory. If that at Auburn game ends up being the ass thrashing that it was a couple of years back, and yeah. they just can't win, they lose that one big road game, then they, they could easily... Then I could see them trucking a &M, a &M, Because yeah. they're going to be a different team. This is just how this stuff always works out. Kids play high and then they play low. It's why they're kids. It's why they're not yeah. professionals. Or they um, play low and then they and then they play, they high. play high. That's right. 
So no, it's all emotion. It's ten and two is nothing to sneeze at. I still got them winning the conference. I still got them playing in the SEC title game. Um, I, I don't know that that you is a win the failure conference. season. Well, oh, wait, no, you the got division. Win the I'm division. so sorry. Okay. Winning the division, playing in the SEC title game. Sorry. Next up, the Kentucky Wildcats. Ten and three last year. Five and three. This is the in team the conference in this division that I got no idea. That's yeah. Uh, returning starters, they got four on offense, five on defense coming back. Experience returning number one hundred five in the country, number eleven in the conference. Their over under is six and a half. The juice is minus one twenty five for the over, plus one hundred five for the under. So they expect them to go more seven and five than. Six and six, or uh, even five yeah, and five seven. And seven yeah. uh, Mark Stoops, thirty six and thirty nine in six years. He has uh, a year of transition coming after their first ten win season in forty years. Well, ten wins a big deal at Kentucky. Yes, a big deal. Yes, I mean, it's, I think it's a big deal anywhere, which is why I'm different than everybody else. Well, I, I agreed. It, yes, ten wins is. No, Tim Wins was big for your LSU Tigers last year. I too. know. That's why I say I, I think like, that's a big deal. But it's almost like, I mean, Les Miles got fired because he didn't hit 10 enough. I know. Like, and that's I crazy. Think, I think that's crazy. Anyway, that's okay. so Kentucky, uh, they lose all time leading rusher Benny Snell. They need a more balanced attack. Um, look, quarterback Terry Wilson finished number 14 in the SEC in total passing yards. Out of how many teams? Uh, out of 14. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, there's no replacing linebacker Josh Allen. Like you, you couldn't no. replace him at Alabama, much less Kentucky. That's right. uh, he he could potentially be the best player that they've in, ever had. That they've ever had in college yeah. football. Yeah, I like mean, if he played any other position or whatever, if, if he wasn't a linebacker, he he would have been up for Heisman's. Yes, and and he could easily be the best pro in last year's draft. Yes, uh, agreed. Um, they lost their entire starting secondary. Talent is upgraded. But the experience is not right now, and that's that could be a problem. I mean, they've had 40 years between 10-win seasons. That means you should expect a drop-off here. But Stoops has got to be careful and not let it be too much of a drop-off, or they are going to get passed by all these other SEC East teams that they have been working to even up with. Even. That's right. Um, I've got them at 7-5. and five. Now, at, my losses are Florida, at Mississippi State, at South Carolina, at Georgia, at Vanderbilt. I've got them beating Tennessee. I've got them beating Missouri. I've got them beating Arkansas. I've got a win over UT Martin and over Louisville, and then over Toledo and Eastern Michigan. Um, I like they 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 got lucky in that they have Arkansas as a cross conference rival or cross conference uh, uh, cross division. That's right. Foe and, or whatever. And Arkansas has and, just been in a yeah. tailspin. For and a while. and they've got Missouri at home. They've got Tennessee at home. You know, it, this is where your home field craziness. I, we have the same record. Yeah, but, it's. It, but this is this is where you just value home field. I, but it I doesn't value matter. Home it field did, some. Like it, yeah, I, you got to value it a lot. I, I do value a lot, but like I've got them losing to Florida at home. I've got them losing at Mississippi State and at South Carolina. But I, you know, we get the same record. We get different losses. But it, wins, would it but, shock yeah. you if they were to lose to Toledo and or Eastern Michigan? Oh yeah. I think both of them. I think their yes. talent is significantly better than those better teams. than those. If teams. they lost to one of them, it wouldn't. I guess it wouldn't surprise me because those. You know, like how they're I feel super about, inexperienced, but you, Toledo you know has how, a lot of experience. Well, yeah, that could. You know, I don't know. I don't know that it would like, surprise me. I don't think they can lose it, both of them. It's a it's a strange. I don't think they'll lose both, but I, I if they lost one, like, I mean, I, I, I watched Mississippi State lose to South Alabama one year. True. So and still came back and made a bowl game. But I, I, I don't know that derails their season. I got them no, seven I don't and five think as well, derail and I think season. seven and five is fine with the amount of talent that they lost. All right, they're yeah. not used to that. They're going to come back down to earth a little bit. They'll be three games different. That's okay. But if they win a bowl game, they're back to eight wins. It's all right. That's not bad. That's I think not that's bad. I, I think that's a good season if I'm if I'm a Kentucky fan. Yes, yes, I agree. Uh, next up, the Missouri Tigers. Eight and five last year, four and four in the conference. Returning starters, they've got seven back on offense, six on defense. Experience returning, number 72 in the country, number seven in the conference. Their over under is eight. The over is minus 130. The under is plus 130. So Vegas thinks it is more likely that they get to nine wins than it is that they fall back to seven. Barry Odom, 19 and 13 in three years, he has gone 14 and six. Since starting one and five back in 2017, 
They are 8-0 and in November since 2016. Clemson transfer quarterback Kelly Bryant takes over for Drew Locke. They've got three offensive linemen returning, along with a ton of skill experience. Uh, running back Larry Roundtree had over 1,200 yards and 11 touchdowns last year. He was totally underrated. People did not pay enough attention to him, and that's because they had Drew Locke, and I get that. But uh, the defensive line was number 22 against the run, but their defense was number 108 in sack rate last year, which is kind of crazy. Secondary is no longer young, and that's a good thing, but this this defensive line and these linebackers have got to pressure the quarterback this year. They could be an SEC East dark horse. They cannot match up with Georgia yet. Um, I'm curious about the NCAA sanctions, right? Like, that has totally rallied the fan base. Uh, they've got the whole Make It Right campaign. I wonder what that's going to do for ticket sales because, remember, they had just completely fallen off after the, say, nobody was going. after the protest and all that different kind of stuff from the team back in, like, 2014. Sure. Uh, and after Gary Pinkle retired. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, this is, you know, year four of Barry Odom. I think he's finally getting this team to come around to what he wants to do. But he's a defensive guy. I was just about and, to say, more defense, less high-powered, fast-scoring offense. And I, I do think that Derek Dooley and that bunch, with Kelly Bryant coming in, they've still got some experience. they got a lot of skill talent. I think they're still going to be pretty good. Um I don't think they're capable of competing for the conference. So I've got I've got them at nine and three. So I've got them going over the eight. Uh, I got a loss at Kentucky, a loss at Georgia, and a loss to Tennessee at home. But then a win over Florida, a win at Arkansas. I mean, listen to the the opening of the schedule. Okay, it sounds hard, but if you really think about it, at Wyoming, West Virginia, right? You got West Virginia at home, Wyoming you should be able to handle. Southeast Missouri, South Carolina at home, Troy at home, Ole Miss at home, and then at Vanderbilt. Like, they should be 7-0. and mean, just chalking up W's against South Carolina. I mean, they got... I, I think they're better than South Carolina. Okay. So, you know... I, that's well, I've got them nine and three. What do, what have you got? I got them seven and five. Seven and five. You not a big Barry Odom believer. What's well, not that? I, I'll tell you this: that November record it's going to change this year. Oh yeah. You don't have cupcakes at the back end of the schedule anymore. No, they. You not, got Georgia. You got Florida. You got Tennessee. That's when teams aren't healthy. That's when these other teams know what they are and are playing a little bit tougher. And 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 the the quality of everything is ratcheted up. Yeah. Florida is better than they've been in a while. And, yes, they went down to Gainesville and beat the That's right. The, the Gator P out of them That's last right. year. But. Like, just because they did it last year doesn't mean they're going to do it this year. Yeah, you don't think They had Florida's a first-round quarterback last year. Like, they don't have that this Florida's year. Florida's probably got that game circled. Yeah, like, I'm and sure I, they do. I, I think highly of Kelly Bryant. Like, Trevor Lawrence may no, be the best quarterback in the country. Correct. Yeah, you lost like, your job to, to maybe the best quarterback in the world in, in college football. I, I fully I'm not that's not a knock on him, but I, I'm just gonna tell you it's it's just I just don't think it's the same. That, and and that's totally reasonable. Like they will have to change up the offense some because Kelly Bryant is not the I know the that they've got some of these home games, but their home crowd isn't anything to be afraid of. No, 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 you're right. You're right. So South Carolina, I don't think you just chalk up it. Now they could easily win that game too. Yeah. But I see that as a coin flip game. That doesn't that doesn't surprise me. So Troy has a first year head coach. West Virginia they're not, has a first yeah, year they're not head gonna coach. they're not gonna lose to Troy. Uh, they Ole they Miss. might lose that West Virginia game, but I'd be sh- I'd be shocked. That would shock me. They're not gonna lose to Ole Miss. But but I've I've got them losing to to Kentucky. I've got them losing to Georgia. I got them losing to Florida. I got them losing to Tennessee. All those teams are gonna bring a ton all those home games, all those teams are gonna bring a ton of fans to, to Missouri. Yeah. I can see that. They're gonna out UT is gonna outnumber Missouri fans. That's gonna happen. Yeah. No, maybe you're right. Maybe so, you're right. All right, let's move on. You got them seven and five. I got them nine and three. Seven and five. All right. The South Carolina Gamecocks. Seven and six last year. Four and four in conference. Returning starters. They've got seven back on offense, five on defense. Experience returning. Number thirty in the country. That's number three in the conference. Will Muschamp, twenty-two and seventeen in three years. He dealt with uh, a lot of injuries and whatnot uh, last year. They bring back a deeper core than he has ever had in Columbia. Uh, the over-under, five and a half. Over is minus 155. The under is plus 135. 
Quarterback Jake Bentley, the most experienced quarterback in the SEC. Running back Rico Dowdle uh, should be the primary weapon after uh, Debo went to the NFL. Uh, however, Dowdle, hamstring issues in spring and whatnot, like that, uh, yep. he seems fine for camp now, but we'll see if that's anything that could Soft be lingering. Soft tissue stuff is, is yeah. Always so. weird. Always weird. You never know what the situation is with those. Uh, defensive line was weak last year, but... Their defensive coordinator, Robinson, says it is the most talented unit this season, so that's that's good. The linebackers were pretty bad last year. The secondary is thin, which should piss off Muschamp because they have brought in some top guys in the front, and the fact that that secondary is so thin, it he can't do exactly what he wants to do that's there. That's right. 2020 is probably the year so long as they can get somebody in there to replace Bentley. That's what's um, so hard is, is this, this schedule is unreasonable. Yeah, no, yeah. Like, this we, is, we talk so much about Texas A and M schedule, but this one is ridiculous. Like I rotating Alabama in and having Clemson be your your out of conference rival. Yeah, it's just it's just tough where you live. Yeah, I mean it's this is let, let's just go through the whole thing. Look against North Carolina in Charlotte in Mac Brown's first game back. Then you got Charleston Southern, Alabama comes to town, then you play at Missouri, then you've got Kentucky coming into town, you got a bye week before you play at Georgia, then you got Florida coming in, then you play at Tennessee, who, by the way, Will Muschamp has never lost to. Interesting. I don't know, when is that Florida too, yep. Uh, Vanderbilt comes in, and then App State comes in, and then you play at Texas A&M, and then you play Clemson at home. Like, you could lose to App State, you, like I. These are the guaranteed wins, okay? Pulling A and M and Alabama from the West and throwing Clemson on there is just unfair. Well, and then and then your road. I schedule. mean, it's it's just crazy. Your road schedule at Missouri, at Tennessee. You got Florida coming in, and you play at Georgia. Yeah, you would think you would like think. I, oh, maybe maybe they can they can take a Missouri or take a Tennessee. You're not winning all those games. It, it would not shock me. Now I I I don't expect them to lose all of them. No, no, but you're like, not losing them all either. I've got them five and seven, but that's with wins against North Carolina, Charleston Southern, Kentucky, Vanderbilt, App State. Now, it would not shock me if they were to beat Florida or Tennessee, uh, lose to Vanderbilt or App State. It wouldn't shock me if they lost to Kentucky and beat Missouri. It wouldn't shock me if they lost to North Carolina. And came up with something else somewhere else, right? Like it's, it, I this team is, they're talented. They're they're a good team, and Muschamp, of course, will always have a a pretty good defensive team, yeah. right? He'll figure I, out something, even though he's thin and 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 doesn't have crazy talent in the back end of that. Yeah. He, he'll figure something out. But there are just so many difficult games. Like it's you are going to have to play above your head. In like eight or nine games this year, I, I just I don't see where a bowl game is is in reach. I, I take that back. They can get to a bowl game at six and six, but man, like to get to six and six, you're gonna have to win either at Missouri or at Tennessee, um, or I guess at Texas A and M. I mean, it, but I God, that's gonna be hard. You know, when you got Alabama at Georgia. Uh, Florida coming in at Texas A and M, and then Clemson coming in. I mean, it's. I've got them seven and five. What? Have, what wins? Have you got them at Missouri? I've got and, them at Missouri because uh, that didn't even get to scare me. It's a coin flip game. We just went over that. Now at Tennessee. No, nope, I've got I've got Vanderbilt and App State. Well, I've got Vanderbilt and App State. I got them Kentucky. I've got Kentucky as well. I've got North Carolina and Charleston Southern. So. Oh, I, I just think I think they win either. Okay, the. I don't know where either Florida, Tennessee, or Texas A and M. You think they win one? No. Of those. Let's go over this because we can't have all of the same, and I only have one game different than you because I'm we're two games apart. I've got North Carolina, I've got Charleston Southern, I've got Missouri, I've got Kentucky, I've got either Florida or Tennessee. I think they win one of those that's, games. That's where we're different because I think they lose all of those. But that's only two games. So that's, we. That, I'm, so, I'm five and seven. You're seven and five. I know that, but I have them winning one of them, not both of them. Yeah, but I, I had them losing at Missouri. Oh, then that's it. That's it. That's yeah. it. <laughs> Sometimes we have to figure this out I was on say, camera. I'm, I'm very confused about that's this. That's the way it goes. Like, how are we so far off? No, so I, I think they're seven and five. I think Muschamp usually gets more out of his team than less. Um, I, and, and yeah, they're going to have to perform well over their head. 
Oh, yeah. But I don't know that he's afraid of that. I'm going to tell you this. He he ain't afraid of Florida. And when Florida comes to South Carolina, that's a game he's got circled. That's, Every I, I year. Normally, I normally he, listen to... He, he owns uh, uh, Tennessee. Yeah. So, like, for me to think that he's going to win one of those games, hell, that's, that's it wouldn't present. surprise me if he wins both of them. But if he does that, I think he's absolutely losing to, like, App State. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, like, because that's also must champ. Oh yeah, he he. Those games are always close. Yeah, always he, close. he's not uh, he's not hitting nine I was, wins. I was listening to. I I always try and listen to Feinbaum at least a couple of times a week. Whatever I saw on Twitter where he thought that South Carolina was going to be the surprise team this year, and he had them as like a ten wing team. How, like what what am I missing? Like I I guess they've got a bye week before Georgia, and Georgia plays. Uh, at Tennessee the week before they play South Carolina, but but it's at Georgia. Like, so you you if you've got them as a ten win team, you've got them beating either Alabama, Georgia, or Clemson. Now, well, yeah, they two have of those to, you're right. Home. You're right. You you have to have them winning two of at least one of those games. Yeah, you're right. And then you're just chalking up the W at A and M. I mean, that's which just, you know you know how I feel about them. Oh and yeah. We'll get to that. I mean, that's it, it's just it's, I love this team. And I like Muschamp, and I'm a big South Carolina guy. This is seven this is, and five would be. This is Homer pick seven yes. and five. Yeah, if they seven went eight, eight, would I'd be, be I'd be ecstatic. I'd be crazy. I'd also win a lot of money. I don't know if they were five and seven, it would be very disappointing, but it wouldn't surprise me. It would just piss me off. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. I could see that. Okay, let's move on from there. The Tennessee Volunteers are next. Five and seven last year, two and six in the conference in Jeremy Pruitt's first season. Returning starters, they have got, uh, let's see, eight back on offense, seven back on defense. Experience returning, number 21 in the country. That's good for number two in the conference. Look, Pruitt shook things up. He hired Georgia's offensive coordinator, Jim Chaney, and USC assistant uh, wide receiver coach, T. Martin. Uh, After the upset of Kentucky, the team basically melded in last year, That's right. and they got blown out by Missouri and Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt has not beaten this team three straight seasons. The defense um, runs a lot of uh, nickel. They return a lot. They had the number 49 total defense. Defensive line is the weakest area after they've replaced four starters this season. The offense brings back a ton of production, but they were number 108 in scoring and number 122 in total offense. Uh, the offensive coordinator, Jim Chaney, him with Jarrett Guarantano, this could be a really good mix. I think they will mesh really well together. They need to beat Vanderbilt this year. They need to make a bowl game to show some progress after a top 15 recruiting class. The over-under is 6.5. The juice is the same on both sides, minus 110. I have got Tennessee, and this is, obviously you know my disdain for Tennessee. I understand. I have, I've got them at 8-4 and four this season. Whoa. That does surprise me. Now, you had them at 9-3 and three last year, but... Eight and four, like, I look at this schedule. I've got them losing at Florida, losing to Georgia, uh, losing at Alabama, and then losing at Kentucky. But I didn't know they were going to mail it in the last couple of games of the season and just quit. All right. No, but that's... that's, I win both of those games. Well, that's see, that's the thing. I've got them winning at Missouri. I've got them winning against Vanderbilt. i got them beating UAB. i got them beating South Carolina. Uh, I've got a win over Mississippi State. I've got a win over Chattanooga, a win over BYU, and a win over Georgia State in the opener. Like I, I think eight wins is reasonable here. I got them nine and three again. Nine and three. Good. Who do you have them? Be, what in, at Kentucky? Well, yeah. Okay. It's so I, I have them Florida. losing to the big three games: Florida, Georgia, Alabama. Okay. And if they beat Florida, it would not surprise me. If they beat the other two, it shocked the hell out of me. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm with you there. I'm with you there. <laughs> That's a difference. So, That's a difference. Good gracious. All right, let's uh, let's close up. Let's let's finish this whole thing with the SEC East. The Vanderbilt Commodores, six and seven last season, made a bowl game, three and five in the conference. Returning starters, they got seven back on offense, only four back on defense though. Experience returning is number one hundred and seven in the country. Not it's good. number 13 in the conference. Not good for a school like this. The over-under is five. The juice for the over, plus 175. Vegas does not think it is likely. The under, minus 200, which also crazy juice. They think it's probably going to hit right on five, I believe. So, uh, Derek Mason, um, 
Actually, I think they're they think it's more likely they'll hit four than uh, than five. Derek Mason, twenty four and thirty eight in five seasons. He always seems to be on the hot seat, but he was awarded a contract extension in February, so he's going to be around for the foreseeable future. Quarterback Riley Neal, a Ball State transfer, takes over for quarterback Kyle Shermer. And listen, they, they got weapons. They got some some crazy weapons. They got uh, Keyshawn Vaughn, who led the SEC with 7.9 yards per carry at running back last year. Wide receiver uh, Kalijah Lipscomb led the SEC with 87 receptions last year. Uh, look, they were they were number 21 in yards per play, 6.3 yards per play last year but number 94 in points per scoring opportunity. They only scored 4.3. You can have explosive plays, but you got to be able to finish, period. Um, look, it's their second year under their defense coordinator, Jason Tarver. The defense improved from 31.3 points per game in 2017 to 26.8 in uh, 2018. They have not been big enough on the defensive line, but they're trying to fix that. They're bringing in a lot of grad transfers, a lot of JUCO kids, et cetera. They have to replace offense coordinator Andy Ludwig, who went to Utah this year. That's going to hurt them, I think. Um, they lose three offensive linemen. Vandy is good, but never great. And the SEC East keeps getting better. Mason, personally, everybody says out like inside the program that he thinks this is his best team that he's had since he's been there. I will have to see it to believe it. I've got him at 4-8 and eight this year. The only wins I've got are, uh, let's see, Northern Illinois, UNLV, Kentucky, and East Tennessee State. Like, I, I think they lose everything else. And how is this for coming out of the gate, right? You got Georgia at home, at Purdue, and then you got LSU at home after a bye week. Like, that's that's 0-3 right off the bat. And and they were used to building some momentum early. That's right. Like, remember, CBS uh, went to the Alabama-Vanderbilt game a few years ago because Vanderbilt was, it was like ranked. like 4-0, yeah, 5-0, something like, they, like that. Like, they had just beaten Kansas State. Like, everybody thought, oh, this defense is... And then Alabama hung 59 on them and didn't yep. give up a point. Like, I need to see it to believe it with this team. I like Derek Mason. I do, too. But I think you got to have somebody like a James Franklin, and you got to have the other teams in this division down for Vanderbilt to be really good. So so where I see things is different, and we, we've talked about this with other teams throughout doing this program and, and going through all these conferences and all these games, they got transfer guys, they got athletes, they got skill guys all over the place that might be his most talented. You know where they don't have dudes? They don't have dudes at the line. Yeah. And you can't you can't beat LSU Georgia. They're going to blow your offensive line to pieces. They're going to blow your defensive well, line to, to here's pieces. Here's the thing. It, to, to compete with Ole Miss. I was, just about, to, with, I was just about to say, yeah. that, that's, that's the extreme – Florida's going to do the same thing to you. Tennessee, Ole Miss, Missouri going to do the same thing to you. Yeah. Like, everybody has def- decent, big, strong offensive linemen, defensive linemen. And if you can't win in the trenches and you're weak there, it does not matter how great of an athlete you got all over the field. It it just doesn't equate to wins in the SEC. Yeah. It, it just – this is not how it works. I got them three and nine, and – and I think it's going to be tough. I, I'm I'm glad he got his money. I'm glad he got a contract. And I think he can build. What I do think Derek Mason can do if they'll be patient with him is every three years have they, one they of those really teams good. that, yep. you know, you get an offensive line, you get a defensive line, you get some skill guys, and they all kind of grow together and you build this thing. And then now we're going to make a run. And maybe not a run at the SEC, but a run at seven, eight wins. Yeah. Nine wins. Yeah. And, and, and just – be relevant and compete and beat your rivals. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. All right, so I've got them four and eight. What you got them? I got them three and nine. Three and nine. I, that's crazy. I gave them. Uh, I gave them more. Credit you gave them the you Kentucky. Did. Yeah, yeah, I certainly did. All right, that's gonna wrap up the SEC East. If you're watching on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button for us. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, whatever it is, hit subscribe. If you're on Apple Podcasts, leave us a five star review. Write in something nice, something witty. We might read it. We might read it on the air. We'll see what happens. Um, but yeah, share the show out for us. We'd appreciate all of the support. Head over to tunicatravel.com. Check out what sport book you want to travel in town and go to. Uh, and we might meet you there. You never know. So we appreciate everybody. We will see you guys next go round.
Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.